Before we start this video at large, thank you to Angus, Brady, Critipart, I hope I'm saying that right, Space Leviathan, Sunday, Bruno, and Dunkrite for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, okay, so today we're going to add an ammo count to the bottom corner of the screen. We're going to make it so you can reload, and we're going to display the current ammo remaining in your weapon. So, first let's go to the UI and set this to scale with screen size, and set our base uh, resolution by 1920 by 1080. This just makes it so the UI scales with the screen. Next, let's double click it, go to the 2D view here, and we're going to come down here, and right now we have a crosshair, and that's all we have on the UI. So we're going to make a new object on the UI that will keep track of our ammo that we have in our gun and the ammo remaining in our inventory. So let's make a new image, and I'm just going to call this uh, ammo count, or you can call it whatever you want. And then I'm going to resize this, and I'm going to change the color, the width, sorry, to about 200. And I'm going to turn my gizmos on so I can see it. I'm going to drag it down here. Whoops, not like that. I'm going to drag the actual object down to the bottom right end of the screen. And I am then going to um, anchor that to the bottom right. Now I'm just going to change it to a shade darker and also just make it so it's uh, half transparent because I'm not going to actually place an actual UI image here. I'm just going to use this for now for prototyping purposes. This will be fine. Set the transparency to about 0 0.2 and that looks perfect. All right, so next we're going to need to add a couple of things inside this. I'm just going to make it a little bit longer. There we go. Um, we're going to add a current ammo count and a reserved ammo count as it is in the Resident Evil 2 remake. So I'm going to add a text object. I'm going to call this, um, let's just call it current ammo text. And then I'm going to set the font size a bit bigger. Actually, first I'm going to go up here, click Alt, make it the same size as this block. And then I'm going to move it to that about the halfway mark right here because on the left side, we're going to show our current ammo. And on the right side, on the other half, we're going to show the ammo we have in reserves. So let's go to here, and I'm going to change the text color to white. I'm going to change the uh, font size to about 26. I'm going to make sure it's centered, uh, both up and down and from left and right. Let's put the font size actually at about, uh, we'll try 50. Yeah, it looks good. And then I'm going to duplicate this object. And instead of having it on the left side, I'm going to pull it over to the right side and snap the other border right here, right dead in the middle. And instead of calling it current ammo text, I'm going to call this reserved or reserves ammo text. And this will be just the ammo you have left over in your inventory, uh, not the ammo that's in the gun. So that looks good. I'm going to add one more object here as a little divider. So it's not just two numbers next to each other. We're going to add a little UI image. I'm going to make it the full size of the square by hitting Alt. I'm going to do my best to put this right in the center here and zoom in really far so I can see this. And I'm going to keep it white, but we're going to lower the transparency. That's perfectly centered. We're going to lower the transparency to about 0.2 again, and what you'll have is this cool little uh, divider effect, and it will just look like it separates them both. So let's bring it down to maybe even 0.4. Now we're going to try 0.2. That looks perfect. Okay, cool. So there we go. Now uh, if I go back into the actual game view for a sec, it looks like this, and that looks pretty cool. Now let's go to our weapon item scripts. We're going to have to add uh, a header here. I'm going to make a new header, and I'm just going to call this Called ammunition, current ammo, or ammo info. We're going to put some stuff in the future regarding ammo. So I'm just going to call it ammo. I'm going to make a variable of type integer, set it to public, and I'm going to call it, um, let's call it remaining ammo. And this will be the ammo that's actually in the gun's magazine or clip. And I'm going to initialize that at zero, and we can edit that later in the scriptable object. But it does begin at zero. Let's save that, and let's minimize this here now. Check my list, see what else we have to do. I'll let that compile and okay so next let's go and look for the player and let's go down to the player equipment manager i believe this is where we call the shoot function maybe it's not though no it's not okay one sec ah okay so use current weapon on the player manager here we go so right here where it says shoot we're gonna come above that we're gonna say if player equipment manager dot i think it's called weapon Yes, not current weapon, just weapon. So this is the current weapon we're using. So if player, player equipment manager dot weapon, then we're going to say dot remaining ammo is greater than zero, uh, then we can shoot. Otherwise, we're unable to shoot. So we can make the gun go click, and we'll handle that in the future with the sound effects and maybe like a little animation. Uh, but for now, we're just going to put an else statement, and we're just going to say click. And then make sure you put the uh, the code for handling shooting, obviously, inside these brackets, the if statement. So you only want to be able to shoot the gun if it actually has ammo remaining. And instead of just putting click here, actually, I'm going to put debug.log click. So it's very apparent that we've attempted to fire a weapon, 
and there is no ammunition left. And even aside from that, I'm just going to put some brackets here, and I'm going to uh, notify the user, you are out of ammo. Reload. There we go. Okay, excellent. That looks good. Now let's go back into the game view here. And now if I try to fire, you can see, click, you're out of ammo, reload. So we're not actually able to shoot. That is working as intended. Next, let's actually go over now to the player UI manager, because we got to keep track of how much ammo we have. So let's make a, another header up here. I'm going to call it ammo. And let's make two text variables. And to use the text variable, we need to actually say using Unity Engine dot UI. Otherwise, you will not be able to make the variable of type text. So let's make the first one and call it um, current ammo text or current ammo count text. And then we can say reserves or reserved ammo count text. And the reason why I say text is because if you ever have a situation where you have an integer and you will need a current ammo count integer and then you have a text version of that variable, it's just nice to say text. So, you know, that's the version that is a text variable. Um, next, let's drag these in here. I'm actually going to rename current ammo text to current ammo um, count. It's always a good idea to keep your game objects the same name as the variables that they're being dragged under because in the future, if you have like 50 to 80 variables, it's really easy to find them if things become unsynced. So now that's done, that's all dragged in. We need to actually update the values on a script. So let's do that. This will happen when we're actually equipping the weapon or shooting the weapon or reloading the weapon. So let's go over now to the player manager. And I'm going to just move all these variables just up here for the neatness sake. Um, no particular reason, it just looks pleasing to the eyes. And then I'm going to add a variable of type player UI manager. On awake, I'm going to say player UI manager equals find object of type player UI manager. This is because there is only one in the scene at one time. So you can use find object of type. It will only locate the only one that exists. And this is a single player game, so no worries there. Uh, now go to the player equipment manager and then go to where we load our current weapon. This is when the weapon actually loads in the character's hands. And we want to actually update the ammo count from here too. So um, wherever you want to, after the weapon has been loaded, just say player um, manager. We actually, oh, we actually have to add that. So let's make a variable of type player manager here on the player equipment manager. And we can also then erase this animator manager because we're going to handle getting all branching scripts from the player manager just so we have to call them 5,000 times. So I'm actually going to erase the animator manager from the player equipment manager and make it public on the player manager and then we can just call it from there. And then I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to change this from animator manager to player manager and I'm going to change the type from animator manager to player manager. So I'm doing this again just because we're going to call this from the player manager. So we have to call it several times. Then we can just say player manager dot animator manager. And there we go. The code works exactly the same and it's a lot neater. So now that that's all done. Let's actually update the um, weapon or sorry, the ammo count on screen. We're going to say player manager dot player UI manager. I think I'm going to make that public. Yes, I do. Let's make that public. Um, and then we're going to say current ammo count is going to be equal to player manager dot player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo. And all this does is it makes the current ammo text on the screen change to a number that is the current ammo in the gun. Make sure you say dot to string. This is important. That changes the number from a text. Uh, I mean, from a number to a text and it's ammo count text dot text. Don't forget that. I always do. Let's save that. Looks good. Now, uh, over on use current weapon right here, we need to subtract ammo and update the screen again. So we're going to say player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo equals player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo minus one. Okay. And after that, we're going to say player UI manager dot current ammo is equal to player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo to string. So that's player UI manager dot res not reserved. Whoops. Player UI manager dot current ammo count text is equal to player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo to string. And that's text dot text because it's the text box of the text variable. I always forget to do that. Save. And that looks good. Okay. So let's now go to our what am I trying to grab? Here we go, uh, the weapon. And let's set the remaining ammo to, I'm just gonna put it at 12 for now, just to give you a demonstration. And now if I start the game, you'll see I have 12 rounds, it's loaded in there in the UI, and if I shoot, there you go, 11. 
it goes down, looks nice. Okay, so, and now if I go over here and I shoot this gentleman to death, let's just shoot him a couple times in the face. You can see that's all working as intended, looks really good. But we need to actually be able to reload the gun too if it's out of ammo. So let's actually get your animation here. I'm using a pistol reload animation. And for those of you waiting on the animation pack for the zombies and the pistol, it will be out as soon as it's finished. Uh, I myself am just using a couple placeholder um, animations I've laying around. So grab any reload animation or just use a placeholder animation if you don't have one. Make a transition back to the empty state. Let's open up the player controls and let's actually make a reload button. So under player actions right now we have aim and shoot. I'm just going to add another action, and I'm going to use the uh, R key on the keyboard. I'm going to call it reload. So the action type is a button, and the path is R on the keyboard. You can make it whatever you want, obviously. Let's close this and save it. And then let's go into the input manager and set this up like we did for the other inputs. And it's going to be very simple. So let's double click here. Let's first make a bool, and we're going to call it reload input. So a public bool, reload input. Cool, excellent. And I'm using this as public so I can see it in the inspector for debugging purposes um, if anything should go wrong. Player controls dot player actions dot reload dot performed plus equals I equals greater than reload input is equal to true. So when you press the R button, you're changing this reload input bool to true. Oh, that's supposed to be dot performed. Uh, now, once it is set to true, we have to do some logic. So let's make a function to always be searching for if it is true. So that will be... Uh, call under handle all inputs, but we're going to call it private void handle reload input. And the first thing we want to do when we open up these brackets here is we're going to say if reload input. So if you press the R key, we need to do some logic. So we're going to want to play a reload animation, obviously. And we're going to want to restock the ammunition of the gun. And we're going to want to subtract that ammunition from the ammunition we have in reserves. Now, we don't have reserves yet because we haven't started our inventory system, but we will get to that in the future. Uh, for now, we're just going to have it as almost like an infinity count. It won't really matter. So we're not going to actually touch this piece of the code until we come back and begin our inventory system. Um, in the future, too, we're also going to have it so we instantiate a clip in the player's hand when we reload and have him put it in the gun. But we'll get to that in the next video. Right now, let's just get the uh, skeleton of it. So we're going to say if player manager dot is, is performing an action return. The reason why we're saying this is because we don't want to be able to reload if we're being attacked or if we're shooting a gun or if we're doing a quick turn or we're already doing some kind of action. We want to let that action play out first. So I'm going to leave a comment here. We do not want to be able to reload while being damaged, shooting, quick turning, etc. All right, so next we need to play a reload animation. This one's very straightforward. Uh, we call upon the player manager and then the animator uh, manager. I think I just called that animator manager and not player animator manager. I might rename that in the next video. Yes, okay, so it is called the animator manager. Getting my projects mixed up. Uh, dot play animation without root motion. Well, we don't necessarily want to not have root motion for this one, so I'm going to make another function on this. Um, it's going to do the exact same thing as this, but we're not going to disable root motion. So for that, it's very straightforward. Let's just make the function first. I'm just going to call play animation to keeping uh, to keep in the consistency with the naming conventions. This one's called play animation without root motion, so I'll just call this one play animation. Uh, we're going to need to pass it a string for our target animation and a bool for are we performing an action. Um, and then I'm going to just otherwise copy everything inside this function except for the line that says animator dot apply root motion equals false. Okay, now let's save that, and uh, then let's call upon it here. We can say play animation. We're going to pass along our target animation, which in this case is pistol underscore reload for me. This will change depending on the weapon, which we will update in the future. Um, and let's say that's true. And then we are going to come out here, place more ammo in the weapon. For now, we're just going to say player manager dot player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo. And we're say 12. And we're going to have a system for this in the future when we have an inventory. Um, but for now, let's just set it to 12 so you can reload every time. We just want to get the actual prototype and playability out there for now, and we'll add on to it as the logic becomes more layered on. So let's say player manager dot player UI manager. Let's update the current ammo. Um, so we will say dot remaining ammo count or current ammo count, sorry, is equal to again the player equipment manager dot weapon dot remaining ammo dot two string. And guess what I forgot to do again? I forgot to say text dot text. So make sure you do that. I'm just gonna come back here right now. And let's put a comment here because in the future we have to actually subtract ammo from our reserved ammo and we have to, have to update the reserved ammo amount on the UI too. So we're going to say update reserved ammo count. 
that's to do in the future. Okay, next come over here and handle all inputs. Let's just call upon our handle reload input. That's good to go. Let's save it. Now, if I go into the game here, oh, we forgot something. Make sure you say uh, reload input equals false after it's called. Otherwise, you'll be locked in an endless loop of reloading. So if reload input is true, then reload input is false. Otherwise, you'll repeat the cycle over and over again. So if I shoot the gun right here now, um, we can reload whenever, but we'll get to that later. If I shoot the gun a few times and then reload, you'll see that it looks good, but my, my player looks like he's kind of having a... He's kind of having a thing happen right now. His, his hands aren't moving, but he's shaking his elbows. So that's because our hand IK system has our hands firmly locked on the pistol. And there's an easy way to fix this. We can say player manager dot animator manager dot right hand IK dot data. Actually, let's just go over to the animator manager. Let's make this even nicer. Let's just make a function to clear it and then one to refresh it. Because you want to clear the uh, hand IK data while you're doing animations that require you to have free movement of the hands. If you're even using hand IK. Um, which I'm sure a lot of people will be because they don't have their animations exactly tailored for their stuff. So uh, let's say right hand IK dot data dot target position weight is equal to zero. And if you're not using hand IK, don't sweat this part. You don't even need this part. Um, then we're going to say right hand IK dot data dot target rotation weight is equal to zero. And then repeat that for your left hands. So again, if you have animations that are perfectly tailored for your weapon uh, through all actions, you won't need hand IK. And that's really great. It probably means you're an animator or you have an animator, which is fantastic. But if you're someone who's making the animations kind of mesh together, then you need to do this. So let's clear the hand IK the second we call upon this function. So we'll say player and uh, player manager dot animator manager dot clear hand IK. And we need to actually re-invoke it after this animation is complete. You can do this 8 billion different ways. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do it on an animation event near the end of the reload animation. So public void dot refresh hand IK. And in the future, we'll have this refresh through a different means. We're going to have it so when or we've hit a flag where we're done reloading because the reload be, could get interrupted by an attack. But for now, this is fine. Um, I'm going to put a comment here. Called upon during certain actions allows the hand IK to release so the animation can take over. And down here, we're just going to put another comment here so it's very clear. Called when actions are we'll say complete, allows hand IK to take hold. So uh, maybe a better name for this would be clear hand IK weights, refresh hand IK weights, because we're actually only editing the weights. So I'm going to rename that just so it's very evident what this does. Um, but again, in the future too, we can have it so uh, upon completing any action, you're, you'll refresh your hand IK. And this will be great. So if you get attacked, it's not going to... Um, basically lock you in a state where you don't have hand IK anymore when you come back. All right, so let's set that to one, set that to one, and set that to one. And next we're going to go back over here now, and let's go to, and make sure you click on your player model, go to the animation window and hit the animation tab itself, and go to your reload animation, and then let's go right to the end of it here. You can see right when it's almost done where his hand goes back to the gun, and let's right click add animation event, and just click refresh hand IK. And that's going to just reinstate the values to one or the weights rather when you're done. And now we'll get something that looks like this. So if we run over here now, spin my camera around, let's aim at the zombie and I could shoot him a couple times and four taps in the head. There he goes. And now if I were to reload the gun, there you go. My hands are free and they lock back on the pistol grip after it is done. So, if you guys did like that video, be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It does genuinely help out my series so, so much. If you're feeling like a super champion, check out my Patreon below, and I will see you guys in the next episode.